guys I've been getting a lot of people asking me questions about Josh like if I have an update do I know where he's at do I know what he's doing has he tried making contact with me has he came back to Michigan so I figured I would answer a few of these questions for you as well as show you basically what I've been dealing with when it comes to him so first and foremost I do not know his exact location but as far as I know he is not in Michigan and that's just based on social media posts that other people have showed me and based on where the phone calls I get from him come from so with that being said yes he has been making phone calls to my phone I've been getting several phone calls from all kinds of different Texas numbers but as soon as one of the numbers calls me I will block it so that way he can't call from that number again but I'm assuming he has like a array of people he's around so he's able to get a hold of a bunch of different phones so he calls me from all kinds of different Texas numbers but then he also calls from unknown so I can't block unknown phone calls so when he calls from unknown it comes through no matter what but of course I don't answer any phone calls that are unknown or that come from Texas or that I just don't know in general like you, it could be a Michigan phone number and I still wouldn't answer because I don't know who it is basically I just don't answer the phone calls because I don't even want to get involved I don't want to give him any hope I don't want to speak to him I don't want to hear his voice and he he knows that I have a personal protection order against him he knows that he's not supposed to contact me or call me but obviously he doesn't really care and I mean I can't really get him in trouble when he's all the way in Texas the personal protection order is enforced but you know it's a whole court hearing type thing that I gotta do just for the phone calls like I can't just go to my local police department and tell them that he's making phone calls and just have him arrested all the way in Texas that's not how it works I can tell them and they can put it on record for me but they can't enforce it for Texas because he would have to be dealt with in Texas and obviously it's not that serious to them and they're not gonna like extradite him or anything just for phone calls but in a really weird way it does feel good to get phone calls from Texas because then I can sit here and feel relieved knowing he's still a whole day's drive away I don't have to worry too much about him being anywhere near me or around me if the worst thing he's gonna do right now is phone calls then that's fine. I want to show you guys some of these voicemails that I get from Josh. He'll call being crazy and then he'll call being normal and then he'll call being crazy and then he'll call being normal and it's just it's crazy. So here is the first voicemail that I'm gonna show you guys. It might be a little like much. It might freak some people out but wait a moment and I'll show you what happened after this voicemail. Yeah. So in this voicemail, he is basically trying to make me think he's dying, he's overdosing, he's making those shaking noises with his hand. He wasn't dying, he wasn't overdosing. I got this phone call in the middle of the night actually. He left a second voicemail right after that, I must have been a butt dial. And you can't hear very well, it's pretty quiet, but you can hear that he has the phone not on his ear and that he is talking completely fine to somebody literally minutes later. Right now. Yes, I'll I'll walk over to that window. I'll walk over to that window. Like you can hear him talking fine, clear as day. I'm not gonna make you listen to the whole thing, but I mean obviously he was trying to call me make me worry, make me want to call him back, make me want to talk to him. And I used to fall for this, guys. I used to fall for these tactics that he uses because I didn't want to not fall for it and something bad happened to him. But you know, now I'm at this point in my life where I don't care anymore. You're not gonna manipulate me and abuse me and convince me that you're dying because you've done it a hundred times now since we are 13 years old and it's enough I've had enough I don't care anymore I don't believe you're gonna do it and if you do end up doing it it's not my fault and I'm not gonna feel 
any blame because it, it, it's a tactic. It's a tactic that you use to get in my head and manipulate me. And you know, I'm just not about it anymore. Here is another one. Hey, it's Josh. Just calling to say goodbye. Just calling, just calling to say goodbye. Why? This was like a week later. Um, so that I just think you're dying, you're dead. Like, why? I. It's just, and I know there's probably so many people who go through this with people like this. It's like, it's a, it's a tactic to get back into your life and to convince you that you need to feel bad for them and you need to care about them. And, and sometimes I think he does do it because if he does decide to do something, he wants me to feel bad. He wants me to feel guilty and I refuse to ever carry that guilt if something ever happens to him. And then something like this voicemail will happen where he calls and he acts like everything's fine and normal and we are like friends and we talk. Hey Nicole, it's Josh. Uh, just calling to check and see how loud it was and everything. Um, I guess I'll try and call you back. I keep on getting your voicemail, so maybe I'm calling at weird hours. I know you guys are in all red. But uh, I'll try again. So, yeah, have a good day. Bye. Paul's acting completely normal, like a normal conversation. After these two voicemails where he pretends he's dying, he's saying goodbye. Like, it's just really, really weird, and it's crazy and it's annoying like at this point it's annoying it used to be overwhelming i used to bawl my eyes out and beg for him to answer the phone and beg for him to tell me where he's at and beg for him to go to a hospital beg for him to get help and i'm just over it i'm not i'm not about that no more i'm just i'm over it you're not gonna make me feel bad for you no more and i of course i understand that there is mental illness here and i get a lot of people saying I feel bad, I hope he gets the help he needs, etc, etc. I'm not saying that he doesn't need help, but I truly believe that deep down he is not only mentally ill, but I think he's really just a bad, evil person. I know a lot of people might not agree with that, but there's millions of people out here who have mental illness and don't commit crimes like he does and do the horrible evil violent things that he does i feel like he definitely at this point is using his mental illness as an excuse to make really bad decisions and i refuse to sit there and tell our son hey you know your dad's mentally ill that's why he does all this because i don't want my son to associate mental illness with committing violent crimes and robbing people and stealing cars and I don't want him to associate those two things ever um, because that is not what happens when you're mentally ill. Obviously some people do but not everybody. I don't want my son to be afraid if he has mental illness one day to talk to me about it or talk tell me about it because of what his dad is like and what he's been through. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't ever want him to associate the two. And I don't think we should because there's millions of people who are mentally ill who don't do these things. So we're not going to sit here and say he needs help. He needs help. He's been offered help. He refuses help. And he just continues to make really bad decisions. So I just, I'm done feeling bad, guys. I don't know where he's at. I don't care anymore. But I'm just, you know, I, I'm, I'm ready to move and to feel safe and to just be in a new position in life and completely move on from him. I'm sure it won't be long before he ends up back in jail. Just because I know he's out here making really bad decisions, doing drugs, all those type of things again. So it's only a matter of time, guys, before something bad happens to him and he's dead or in jail. and. I mean, that's a really sad thing to say. He's Lyle's dad. I feel awful for Lyle, but I can't change the fact that he's his dad. I didn't know when I was 15 years old that this guy was going to end up being so freaking crazy. Okay, I just didn't know. But, you know, we've dealt with it the best we can. I'm trying my best to be the best mother and to fill in for what he has f***ed up. So, yeah, I just want to update you guys on whether... I've heard from him and whether he's back here in Michigan. I'm doing well. I'm doing good. And we are moving in just a few months. So this chapter of my life is about to finally close. At least a little bit. I mean, obviously I will still be worried. But not knowing where I live is like the biggest thing for me. And the most important thing for me. So that's just going to be huge. <sighs>
all right thank you guys for watching thank you to all of you who support me and i love you i will see you next time bye